Welcome. This is the One Year Bible Reading for June 5th, and we begin today recounting David, David's mighty men in 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 24. Other members of the 30 included Asahel, Joab's brother, Elhanan, son of Dodo from Bethlehem, Shema from Herod, Elika from Herod, Helez from Pelon, Ira, son of Ikesh from Tekoa, Abizer from Anathoth, Sibachai from Husha, Zalman from Ahoa, Maharai from Natopha, Heled, son of Baina from Natopha, Ithai from Ribai from Gibeah in the land of Benjamin, Benai from Pirathon, Hurai from Nahel Geash, Abai Alban from Araba, Azmabeth from Bahurim, Elahaba from Shalbon, the sons of Jashin, Jonathan, son of Shagi from Harar, Ahiam, son of Sharar from Harar, Eliphalet, son of Ahas Ahasbai from Mecha, Elam, son of Ahithophel from Gillo, Hezro from Carmel, Peari from Arba, Ilgal, son of Nathan from Zobah, Bani from Gad, Zelek from Ammon, Naharai from Beroth, Joab's armor-bearer, Ira from Jatir, Gareb from Jatir, Uriah the Hittite. There were thirty-seven in all. In all. Once again the anger of the Lord burned against Israel, and he caused David to harm them by taking a census. Go and count the people of Israel and Judah, the Lord told him. So the king said to Joab and the commanders of the army, Take a census of all the tribes of Israel from Dan in the north to Beersheba in the south, so that I may know how many people there are. But Joab replied to the king, May the Lord your God let you live to see a hundred times as many people as there are now. But why, my lord the king, do you want to do this? But the king insisted that they take the census, so Joab and the commanders of the army went out to count the people of Israel. First they crossed the Jordan and camped at Aror, south of the town in the valley, in the direction of Gad. Then they went on to Jazer, then to Gilead, in the land of Tatim, Hodshi, and to Danjon, and around to Sidon. Then they came to the fortress of Tyre and all the towns of the Hivites and the Canaanites. Finally they went south to Judah, as far as Beersheba. Having gone through the entire land for nine months and twenty days, they returned to Jerusalem. Joab reported the number of people to the king. There were 800,000 capable warriors in Israel who could handle a sword, and 500,000 in Judah. But after he had taken the census, David's conscience began to bother him, and he said to the Lord, I have sinned greatly by taking this census. Please forgive my guilt, Lord, for doing this foolish thing. And the suggestion here is perhaps that he's looking to number his people, that he might rely on his own strength, the strength of his army, greater than the strength of the Lord. The next morning, the word of the Lord came to the prophet Gad, who was David's seer. This was the message. Go and say to David, this is what the Lord says. I will give you three choices. Choose one of these punishments and I will inflict it on you. So Gad came to David and asked him, Will you choose three years of famine throughout your land, three months of fleeing from your enemies, or three days of severe plague throughout your land? Think this over and decide what answer I should give the Lord who sent me. I am in a desperate situation, David replied to Gad, but let us fall into the hands of the Lord, for his mercy is great. Do not let me fall into human hands. So the Lord sent a plague upon Israel that morning, and it lasted for three days. A total of 70,000 people died throughout the nation, from Dan in the north to Beersheba in the south. But as the angel was preparing to destroy Jerusalem, the Lord relented and said to the death angel, Stop, that is enough. At that moment, the angel of the Lord was by the threshing floor of Aruna, the Jebusite. When David saw the angel, he said to the Lord, I am the one who has sinned and done wrong, but these people are as innocent as sheep. What have they done? Let your anger fall against me and my family. That day Gad came to David and said to him, Go up and build an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Aruna the Jebusite. So David went up 
to do what the Lord had commanded him. When Aruna saw the king and his men coming toward him, he came and bowed before the king with his face to the ground. Why have you come, my lord the king? Aruna asked. David replied, I have come to buy your threshing floor and build an altar to the Lord there so that he will stop the plague. Take it, my lord the king, and use it here as you wish, he said to David. Here are the oxen for the burnt offering, and you can use the threshing boards and yoke, ox yokes for wood to build the fire on the altar. I will give it all to you, your majesty, and may the Lord your God accept your sacrifice. But the king replied to Aruna, No, I insist on buying it, for I will not present burnt offerings to the Lord my God that have cost me nothing. So David paid him fifty pieces of silver for the threshing floor and the oxen. David built an altar there to the Lord and sacrificed burnt offerings and peace offerings. And the Lord answered his prayer for the land, and the plague on Israel was stopped. Acts chapter 3 Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in the three o'clock prayer service. As they approached the temple, a man lame from birth was being carried in. Each day he was put inside the temple gate, the one called the Beautiful Gate, so he could beg from the people going into the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for some money. Peter and John looked at him intently, and Peter said, Look at us. The lame man looked at them eagerly, expecting some money. But Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, get up and walk. Then Peter took the lame man by the right hand and helped him up. And as he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. He jumped up, stood on his feet, and began to walk. Then walking, leaping, and praising God, he went into the temple with them. All the people saw him walking and heard him praising God. When they realized he was the lame beggar they had so often seen at the beautiful gate, they were absolutely astounded. They all rushed out in amazement to Solomon's colonnade where the man was holding tightly to Peter and John. Peter saw his opportunity and addressed the crowd. People of Israel, he said, what is so surprising about this? And why stare at us as though we had made this man walk by our own power or godliness? For it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of all of our ancestors, who has brought glory to his servant Jesus by doing this. This same Jesus whom you handed over and rejected before Pilate, despite Pilate's decision to re release him, you rejected his holy righteous one and instead demanded the release of a murderer. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead, and we are witnesses of this fact. Through faith in the name of Jesus, this man was healed, and you know how crippled he was before. Faith in Jesus' name has healed him before your very eyes. Friends, I realize what you and your leaders did to Jesus was done in ignorance, but God was fulfilling what all the prophets had foretold about the Messiah, that he must suffer these things. Now, repent of your sins and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped away. Then times of refreshment will come from the presence of the Lord, and he will again send you Jesus, your appointed Messiah. For he must remain in heaven until the time for the final restoration of all things, as God promised long ago through his holy prophets. Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. Listen carefully to everything he tells you. Then Moses said, Anyone who will not listen to that prophet will be completely cut off from God's people. Starting with Samuel, every prophet spoke about what is happening today. You are the children of those prophets, and you are included in the covenant God promised to your ancestors. For God said to Abraham, Through your descendants, all the families on earth will be blessed. When God raised up his servant Jesus, he sent him first to you people of Israel to bless you by turning each of you back from your sinful ways. We see that really coming to life, how this witness is coming to Jerusalem first. Psalm 123, a psalm of ascent. I lift my eyes to you, O God enthroned in heaven. We keep looking to the Lord our God for his mercy 
just as servants keep their eyes on their master, as a slave girl watches her mistress for the slightest signal. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy, for we have had our fill of contempt. We have had more than our fill of the scoffing of the proud and the contempt of the arrogant. Proverbs sixteen twenty one through 23 The wise are known for their understanding, and pleasant words are persuasive. Discretion is a life-giving fountain to those who possess it, but discipline is wasted on fools. From a wise mind comes a wise speech, comes wise speech. The words of the wise are persuasive. And to end, we're with Selwyn Hughes um, back again today, looking at disappointment. This called Love is Not Blind from 1 Corinthians thirteen eight. Love Never Fails. If we draw back from being willing to face and feel our disappointments, then a part of us will experience spiritual deprivation. The more deeply we enter into our disappointment, the more thoroughly we will be able to see how committed we are to self-protection and turn from that in repentance to a more complete dependence on our Lord Jesus Christ. Where have you been disappointed the most, I wonder? Most people whom I address that question tell me, my parents. It's surprising, though, how so few, how so many, sorry, will admit to being hurt or disappointed by their parents. Uh, will, sorry, let me try that again. <laughs> it is surprising, though, how so many will not admit to being hurt or disappointed by their parents for fear they are failing to honor them or are being disloyal. Listen to what one writer has to say about this. When someone appreciates his parents only because he overlooks the pain they caused him, his appreciation is not only superficial, it is self-protective. Love is never blind to others' faults. It sees them clearly and is not threatened. It admits disappointment but forgives and continues to be warmly involved. Sadly, for most of us, love is not the bottom line. Self-protection is. When we can look into the face of every disappointment and be willing to feel the pain it brings, there is no more powerful way of motivating our heart to turn in full dependence toward the Lord. If we are unwilling to do this, then as we saw, we might cling more to our own ways of handling disappointments than his. And if we do, then in no way can we climb to higher and more distant spiritual peaks with all four feet. Father, the more we become aware of what is involved in climbing higher with you, the easier it is to become discouraged. We are dull and blundering disciples. Help us, dear Lord. Your grace works miracles. Work one in us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Keep your eyes open for his wonder-working miracles as you go through your day. Love you all. Have a beautiful day.